Hi everyone, welcome back to the LNS Crafts channel. It has been a while, I know. Um, I have had a number of things going on since Christmas time and um, so I was unable to film but I'm back and I have a few bits and pieces to share with you, not a huge amount. I lost interest in my cross stitching for a good while and I've only recently picked that up. Um, I've been kind of getting back into knitting because it's been so cold I've been wanting to make myself jumpers and so um, I've been doing that um, so I've kind of taken up knitting again in a sense um, not that I stopped knitting I kind of I go through phases so if you guys probably understand but if you're multi crafters you probably understand I go through phases with my crafting so um, I'll have a phase where I like to do a lot of knitting and then suddenly I will stop knitting and I'll be on to the cross stitching and then I'll stop that and then I might do some crocheting and then I'll stop doing that and sometimes I might just like to do a bit of everything um, but over the last few months I'd say I've been kind of steering more towards my knitting um, and a little bit of crocheting so my cross stitch work has suffered a little bit so um, I'm not going to be sharing any cross stitch in this video because there's not really anything to show. Um, I've done a little bit of crocheting and um, so yeah mainly this video is going to focus on the knitting projects that I've been working on so if you're interested in um, seeing what I've been knitting up um, then stay tuned if not then hopefully I will have more to share with you the next time I record a video. So let's get straight into what I have been knitting. So I've got my um, my Ravelry account here that I'm just kind of checking because I have to jog my memory because there's a lot of lot of things have been happening and um, and so it's not like it's not fresh in my mind how things have, what I've been working on. So first of all, um, I'm not sure if in my last video because I haven't even checked my last video, but I just kind of spontaneously decided today right I'm going to record a video. Let's go with that. So. Um, I'm not sure if I've shown you this before, but I worked on the October hat, which looks like this. Um, I think I did this around Christmas time. I was in the mood for knitting hats um, and I was going to gift stuff. They were going to be like Christmas gifts. And so I had a go at this hat, um, the October hat. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, but I'll check that out when I edit the video I will put the information in the description box for that and um, so I made up this hat and I used let's see what yarn was it I used oh see there now my my iPad is playing up just a second I think it was a style craft yarn that I used I don't seem to have the label but this is the finished hat it has quite a long um, rib section here so it's a two by two rib here and then we go into the cables and that's what you see that's what the top looks like um, I like this I was happy knitting it up it was quite easy let me take my clip out and I can show you what it looks like on sorry that's what it looks like on it's a beanie type hat I enjoyed knitting this up it was a nice kind of um, uh, reintroduction to cables for me quite a quick knit I can usually knit up a hat in a couple of days um, if I am taking my time with it if I'm rushing it I could probably do it in a day but this I think it took me yeah it, it took me two days according to my Ravelry records it took me two days to knit this up so it's quite an easy pattern um, the cables looks like I messed up one of the cables there or did I maybe not I like the way the cables are so you have different types a couple of different types of cables so you've got the thicker one and you've got the smaller ones there so that makes the hat a little bit more interesting um, as you can see there I enjoyed knitting this um, I don't know what to say it's double weight double knit yarn that I used for this and I'm pretty sure it was Stylecraft special um, yarn and it's nice and warm and yeah I enjoyed this and uh, I think it's a fun knit and I would definitely recommend the pattern if you're interested in knitting some hats so that is that um, I've knitted another hat this one I just finished today this one I use my biscuit hat pattern as a kind of a base um, for the stitch count 
and and then I just decided to do a two by two rib all the way and see how I get on so this one I used again Stylecraft yarn I think it was the same yarn that I used for the other hat I just showed you but I've also mixed it with a mohair yarn that was gifted to me um, some time ago I don't have any notes on my Ravelry account on this because I I kind of just just decided to have a go at this off the cuff um, so I've not put any notes down so it's just a two by two rib I've used a DK weight Stylecraft yarn um, mixed with a mohair yarn so it's quite fluffy I'm not sure if you can see like a the, the halo effect around it it's just a beanie um, and it's a very simple pattern and I just used the decreases from my biscuit hat that I designed myself and um, I'll just again take my thing off and show you what that looks like it looks pretty small but when I put it on my head it comes up quite nicely um, it's a, a good fit it's a beanie style there's not once I if I just if I don't double the rim then it's a nice fit obviously if I pull up the rim then it's a bit smaller so it's more of a beanie style um, it could fit a child because it looks quite small when you look at it like that it looks quite small could fit a child and have the rim doubled up like that um, that's how it looked while I was knitting it and I knit this on uh, 12 inch four millimeter needles um, all the way so yeah that was that was another fun knit for this I just really for this project all I wanted to do really was to see it was like a um, it was kind of like a tester to see what the fabric would look like with um, the mohair and the double knit yarn knitted together and that was the idea for this hat um, I just wanted to see what fabric it would produce and how it would look knit up and I think it comes up quite looks quite nice um, the actual texture it's nice and fluffy it doesn't feel scratchy because it's going on the head it's going to be it's going to be um covering hair so i don't feel the scratchiness so much and because it's a beanie it covers my ears it feels nice it doesn't feel scratchy to me so um so yeah i'm kind of i'm happy with the way this turned out this might end up being a gift or i might just keep it for myself but yeah, this was just a little test really to see what the yarn would look like, um, the mohair and the double knit yarn. And I'm quite pleased with the way that one ended up. So, um, the next thing I have to show you is the shawl I'm wearing. So I decided, it's been a long time since I wore, made um, any shawls. So um, I wanted to have a shawl that was going to, um, look nice alongside a jacket that I have which is a purple colour jacket basically so I've got a purple coloured jacket and I wanted to have a shawl that matched that because usually I have this blue one um, that I made many years ago and I think it's called the Barkline shawl this one and I wear this with everything because I love blue it, it doesn't really bother me and I wear it with everything basically um, and it, it looks really pretty and I'm, I'm happy with this and this is a four ply yarn but what I thought was, I haven't done a shawl in a double knit weight and I wanted a purple one to go with my purple jacket. So I decided to purchase some yarn and I got some yarn from uh, Ellie at Craft House Magic. And the yarn I got was called Never Ending Story, the colourway. And it's a double knit yarn and it's a, a merino nylon base. And I decided to have a go at a shawl by Stephen West um, of West Knits. And it's called the Pierre. So that's what the pattern is. And that's what the design looks like. And um, it looks quite simple. When I had a quick look through the pattern pictures on the on the website, um, I had a look at the... Let's see if I can show you that. You can see some of the detail on the shawl. And here, specifically, here's another caption from the pattern. It looks quite easy. It looks like a nice, simple knit, um, but just with some interest to it. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at that um, and see see how I get on with that. It's not anything that's going to really um, be complicated or it's going to tax my brain too much. So I thought, right, that seems like a good um, project to have a go at um, for a shawl. And I am really pleased with the way it turned out. It is quite a big shawl. So 
I'm not sure if it's if I push the camera back I still don't think I'm going to get it all into the picture so like I said it's double knit yarn it's a merino nylon base the yarn is the colorway is called never ending story I'll give you a close-up of the yarn it's by Ellie of craft house magic and I absolutely love the way it turned out love the colors it's got like a it's got different shades of purple really so it's kind of a mixture of kind of purple and bluish kind of look to it um anyway so this it's difficult to show the whole thing so i'll start at this corner it's got a nice kind of curved edge here you can see that's the bottom and if i keep going along it just gets bigger it's a what do you call it a crescent shawl like that and there we go corner to corner so i have blocked it because um, before blocking, the the the, um, the edges wouldn't show as nicely as they do now. Um, I blocked it out so that you could see the curves at the bottom and and the lace work. So that looks really pretty. Um, so it starts at the top here with the cast on, and then it works kind of outwards like that. And it's really it's really enjoyable to knit. Um, I did have some issues with the lace work at the start at the triangles so there's a triangle section here there's two triangle sections but there's one triangle section here it's difficult to show it um, let's see if I can if I double it up maybe you'll be able to see a bit better let's see right so this triangle section here my holes were not in the right places so um, where some of the lace some of the holes were meant to be were not I just kept getting it wrong for some reason I think my stitch count was off a few times and so my holes ended up in the wrong places but I figure I mean I don't really notice it when I'm wearing it I don't really care and I don't think anyone else really is looking at where the placement of the holes are so um, it doesn't bother me now it bothered me while I was knitting it but after doing that first section there was no way I was going to rip it back so I just decided to go with it forget about the holes being in the wrong place and just continue with the pattern and I am really pleased with the way it turned out it's a paid for pattern so I can't give you too much information but it is I would say it's a kind of I'm not sure I would describe it as an intermediate pattern but because of the lace it does have uh, you do have to do yarn overs you do have to knit through back loop and um, knit two together um, so if you if you can do those things if you can do if you know how to do yarn overs you're confident with yarn overs you're confident to knit through back loop and you're confident to knit two together um, and SSK um, slip slip knit that is then I think you'll be able to do this quite easily um, it is a really really lovely pattern to work with like I said even me as a I wouldn't say I'm a expert knitter but I'm I would describe myself as an intermediate knitter um, even me even I made mistakes with this probably because I've lost um, concentration where I was at or whatever where I've put it down and kind of had to come back to it halfway through a row and stuff like that where I've had interruptions and stuff so I would have made mistakes like I said I made mistakes with putting the whole placement in certain things but it doesn't take away from the end result I th I think it still looks fabulous and it is really big let me see if I can show you just how big this shawl is it is a lovely length look at that all the way down to here it's a really nice length and you can wear it however you like i'm really pleased with it I, I kind of when i'm feeling a little bit of a chill in the house um i will put this on over my shoulders to watch tv or whatever sit with my little sit on the snow the sofa with my blanket covering my legs and my shawl covering my shoulders and um it's really lovely and comfy and it's soft the yarn is so soft and nice and you can wear it it is quite thick so i did um because it's double knit yarn I did try to put it under my coat like this because this is how I like to wear my shawl under my coat just to cover up the zip section and it is quite bulky under the coat so 
um, I found that I'd have to wear a bit of a, a lighter weight coat to be able to fit all of this fabric underneath it without me looking like I've got some huge mass here. So I haven't actually worn it out with my coat that I intended to wear it with, <laughs> strangely enough, at the moment because of the fact that it's quite bulky. Um, but I do tend to wear it around the house just to kind of keep the chill off. And I really love the way it looks. I love the feel of it. It's lovely and soft. And I'm very pleased. And I would knit another one. And I was thinking... Sorry, this is not... The zoom's not quite working. Come on. I was thinking about um, perhaps trying the pattern in a... Uh, four ply yarn just to take away some of the bulk um, because it's a really really nice pattern and it just it deserves to be knit again quite frankly and it's a really easy knit but I think that because the DK weight is quite a quite it, it produces quite a bulk I think the the yarn four ply yarn or fingering weight yarn would be a little less bulky but still just as warm and snug so i'm thinking about doing it again but with a four ply yarn um next time so we shall see watch this space so that's that anyway i've rambled enough about that one um so that is the pierre by stephen west um or west knits so that's the pattern so i'm really pleased with that um next up i have i decided to have a go at jumper so i saw this um i saw this jumper on i think his name is jonathan's days i was looking for knitting podcasts um to see what people have been knitting and i had i was having a flick through youtube and i saw that this person jonathan had um he popped up in my feed as someone that showed off all the things that he had knit in a year and I watched his video and I was really excited by the things he'd been knitting. And I thought that was a great idea for a video to show everything that you have knit in one year. And he had quite a lot of stuff. And one of the things that caught my attention was this jumper. And it's called the Anchors Sweater. This is what it looks like. Um, so it's a top down sweater. And it's done in, I think it was meant to be knit in... DK weight I think yeah so what it is the sweater is it's knit from the top down but it is worked in two strands of yarn so it is meant to be done in two strands of um, fingering weight yarn but um, I decided that that I'm not going to go and, and purposely buy um, two lots of fingering weight yarn to knit that up I thought you know what two lots of fingering weight should equate to a DK weight yarn and I made the mistake yes the mistake of actually purchasing a yarn which was a um, an Aran weight yarn worsted weight and um, I didn't realize until I'd actually finished it in the jumper and um, had decided to um, look at the labels and keep the labels <laughs> put the labels aside so I could show you guys so what I ended up doing I bought um, I knit the jumper in a drops big merino yarn and the color is called grage i liked the color so what i think happened i was looking on the wool warehouse website and i was looking for a yarn to make this jumper in and i couldn't find the color that i wanted in the double knit yarn i think this is what happened in the double knit yarn at the time and um because i was looking for a beigey color so i came across this beigey brownie color yarn and I didn't look I didn't check the weight of the yarn so I ended up buying that yarn in um, an Aran weight so I started knitting the jumper um, it was looking fine it was a big merino uh, drops big merino yarn in the color grage I love the color I love the feel of the yarn I've used that um, merino yarn before from drops and I love it it is really nice I bought a number of balls of yarn and I made the jumper it's only after I knit it up that I thought, hang on a second, it's looking a bit snug. Um, it doesn't quite look as loose fitting as I wanted. I wanted it to be um, kind of a loose fitting jumper, not something snug and shape, you know, shape defining. 
and I knit it in the medium size so that's 35 to 37 inches bust and um, I was knitting that in that yarn so I'll just put it on and show you so just so you know I I was happy with the way the jumper fit when I first got it however it was a bit snug fitting after washing it has been washed once it has loosened up and it fits a lot more the way I want it to fit um, so this is what the jumper looks like um, you can see where I've folded it so this is what it looks like I'm really pleased with the length of the jumper um, you can see it is just below my bottom here just you know around about middle of my bottom um, I like the length I did it a bit longer than the pattern calls for because I like to have my jumpers sitting quite low I like them to be low I wanted it to be roomy so the only reason that it is not as snug and I can fit this t-shirt underneath it is because I've washed it and it has loosened the fabric has loosened the sleeves are a nice length um, for me and I'm pleased with the way it's turned out the decreases go from the top it has kind of bobbled a bit if you can see after one wash this is one wash and it has kind of bobbled a bit this yarn um, so that's interesting and I, and I have worn it so yeah but I don't mind I like it I'm happy with the jumper and I was so happy with it that I decided to knit another one so I this time I went with a double knit yarn and let me see I went with the large size instead of medium and um, because I I definitely wanted it to be more roomy so I've gone with a large size I've used the similar yarn so it's still drops yarn but this is drops lima and um, the drops lima yarn if I can I've still got some left over let's see so the drops lima is a mixture of alpaca and wool it says wool and alpaca for every day so that's the yarn drops lima and that's the info and that's the color it's a nice purpley color and it's got a nice fluff to it and this is the jumper and it comes up really nice I'll take this one off and um, show you this one in a second so this is the alpaca the wool and alpaca version so you can see it's a little bit more snug on the neck um, which I like I'm pleased with that and if this t-shirt if I fix the t-shirt properly then I can kind of hide that underneath um, I can kind of hide what I'm wearing underneath because it fits nicely the sleeves are a little bit I think the sleeves are a little bit shorter on this one this one hasn't been washed yet so this is hot off the needles hasn't been washed yet so it doesn't have that stretch to it yet so the sleeves are looking like that could I could have done a little bit more to make it a little bit longer but I figured that it'll probably stretch a bit once I've washed it I'm happy with the room in the body I'm happy with the length I do think I added um, a few more rows to the actual length suggested in the pattern um, I think it was probably 10 rows of rib and I added another three or four rows just because I like a longer length um, so yeah I'm really pleased with the fit of this I've got some feels like I'm bit, I've got a bit of room in the sleeve area as well it's not snug fitting it's just nice and comfy it's a nice loose kind of comfy fit and I'm really pleased with it I think it's kind of it doesn't make me it doesn't show my my belly up it kind of you know I'm, I like it I'm quite happy with the fit of this so that is this jumper so the information I can tell you on this jumper um, which I forgot to share how much I paid for the last one so this one I used 11 balls of yarn um, I have that much left of the 11th ball and it cost me 26 pounds 40 to make this jumper so I'm really pleased with that I'm really pleased with that the other version strangely enough the Aran weight version this cost me quite a bit more um, let's see if I can if I can find 
the detail on this because I had to buy more yarn. This was 14, 14 balls of yarn I used for this one and it cost, yeah, 14 balls of yarn for the Aran weight jumper and it cost me £46.90 to make it. So this is much more, it was much more expensive to make it in the Aran weight than it was to make it in the DK weight. So I'm definitely going to be sticking to the DK weight yarn um, and because and I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with the way both of them look, but I don't want to be spending that amount of money um, on a jumper. So I'm happier with the £26 figure for the jumper. So yeah, um, I didn't really, this is the thing, it's like when, when I decided to buy the yarn, I just thought, I want to make a jumper, I'm just going to order the balls of yarn, I'm going to get going, and that's it. It didn't, I, I didn't think properly about, hang on, how much is it actually going to cost me to make this jumper, and would I pay that amount of money in the shop for that jumper? Um, I was just, in my head, I was just like, I haven't done any knitting for ages, haven't knit a jumper for ages, I want a jumper, I'm going to buy this yarn, I'm going to make my jumper, I'm going to have something to wear that I've made myself. And that's that's what was going on in my head. It's only afterwards that I started to think, well, hang on a second, it's cost me quite a lot of money to make this, because what happened, I ran out of yarn for the Aran weight one and had to purchase another two, another two balls of yarn. And um, I think there was half a ball of yarn left over from the Aran weight one, but it's still, it, it's quite, it was quite, it was a lot more expensive to make the Aran weight one than to make the DK weight one. So it was only after I'd knit it and I'd spent the money that I thought, well, hang on a second, why didn't I factor this in when I was looking at what yarn I was going to buy? So when I was, when I decided to knit the second jumper, I was looking, I was more conscious of the price um, of the yarn that I was going to use and so as a result of me being a bit more aware of what I was doing in terms of cost I've come out with a cheaper version much cheaper version than the Aran weight so it is worth looking at um, figuring out how much yarn you're going to need to make the jumper and then you know totting up how much it's going to cost you to actually make the jumper um, rather than doing what I did and just ordering what I thought I needed and then having to buy more and, and then thinking about the cost later so yeah not not the brightest um, moment for me there but I'm happy with the jumper the money is spent I can't change that um, I just need to be a little bit more conscious in future of what I'm spending um, because I wouldn't ordinarily I would not spend 40 odd pounds for a jumper in the shop um, much less pay that much for something that I I have to make myself so yeah it was a bit of a strange one a bit of a strange realization um, anyway, so I forgot to show you the yarn that I used for this shawl. Um, so I still have a lot of it left over. Um, let me see, where is it? And I bought, how many balls did I buy? I bought four. I bought four skeins of yarn um, from Ellie at Craft House Magic, a never ending story. And I have quite a lot left over. I've still got all of that left over. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with this because I've been putting some of it into a scrappy crochet bl blanket. Um, but it just feels like, hmm, do I really want to put it into a scrappy blanket? I've put some of it in, but I'm like, oh, maybe I should find something else to do with this. But I'm not quite sure because it's not really enough to do another shawl. Or I don't think it's enough to do a hat. So if you've got any ideas um, for what to do, what to make with this let me know in the comments section below the video that would be helpful so yeah so that is the yarn never ending story um by ellie at craft house magic and it's a dk weight um merino nylon base that i used for that so i've also made some socks and i actually have information on the socks so these i used let's see i've got the price here now so this was a heritage cascade heritage cascade heritage prince yarn in the color berries and it cost 10.99 for the ball of yarn and it was a 100 gram ball of yarn so i used most of it and i've put the rest into my scrappy crochet blanket which i'll show you in a second so this is the label heritage prince and it is 
superwash merino and nylon base and that's what it looks like i got it on the wool warehouse website and i love this is what the it's supposed to look like once it's knit up and it actually does so these are the socks i made i, I don't have my sock blockers to hand but these are the socks i've made it's a really really soft yarn i've never used um this yarn before and i thought it was quite pricey but it's a really really nice nice soft yarn haven't worn these socks yet so they're still hot off the needles in that sense i made a slightly longer length sock than i have been doing recently more recently with my sock knitting i've been doing um kind of shorty socks because i've been i enjoy wearing those but because it's been cold i wanted to make something slightly longer and what i found was that when i started knitting this because i do cuff down these are cuff down vanilla socks by the way so they are two by two rib for about two inches and then stocking stitch and then a heel flap and gusset and then a rounded toe like that and um yeah so i use nine inch circulars um 2.25 millimeters i think that's a size one us and um i decided to knit a longer length leg here but what I didn't think about while I was knitting these was the fact was how high up these were going to go because I wasn't sure when I started knitting how long I was going to make them because I wanted to try and use as much yarn as I could for the socks so I just continued knitting for as long as I thought um, was necessary and then when I've tried them on I've realized that these quite they come quite high up the calves and um, in hindsight I could have had more stitches at the top because the higher up the legs you go the obviously for me anyway the bigger the calves are so i should have had perhaps maybe uh, 68 stitches instead of 64 which is what i normally do and which is what these are 64 stitch socks i should have perhaps done 68 and had it wider and then um done some stitch some decreases going downwards towards the foot and that would have made the top bit fit a little bit better um but like i said i've never done that kind of I've not never done really long length socks before so um, I wasn't quite sure what, what the fit was going to be like they do fit okay but they are quite stretched at the top because they're quite high up the calves so in hindsight I would perhaps next time do a 68 68 stitch sock and then just do decreases as I'm getting lower down the leg the leg section but I am pleased with them they are lovely and soft and I like the way the colours turned out. If I wanted them to be absolutely matching, then I could have done because there was enough yarn left over for me to do that. Um, but I can't show you that now because I've already used up that yarn in my scrappy blanket. So there's none of that left now. I've used it all up. But I could have done matchy socks and started like that and just um, used the other bit, you know, the leftovers. For the blanket but it didn't occur to me to do that at the time because i don't i'm not really that fussed about my socks being matchy matchy so yeah so that is where i got with those and i am pleased with these and now that i've shown you i can get to wear them so i'm pleased about that so yeah so those are the socks so that is everything that's everything that i've done oh i've got the yarn label for the never ending story craft house magic yarn label um Sorry, everything's a little bit haphazard in this video. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but there we are. So lastly then, I can share with you my crochet blanket. And this, it's a scrappy blanket. So basically the idea behind that is that um, when I finish up a project like this jumper or the other jumper, I just use the leftover yarn and crochet into a blanket. So... Um, the pattern I'm using a pattern for this blanket and it's called the scrappy happy granny stripe blanket and it's free on Ravelry that's it there and who's the designer uh, I didn't actually say but I'm sure if you google it crochet me lovely it says follow me follow crochet me lovely on all social media so crochet me lovely is the person that is that designed this is a straightforward granny stripe blanket but i like to have a pattern to follow when i'm doing these things um so it's looking it's getting bigger it's 
that big now. It's got quite a length to it. Um, not quite as, where is it? It's up to my waist. So it's not, not quite there yet. I want a nice big kind of blanket. It's wide. I decided to make it kind of so that it can, can it wrap around me once? Let's see. Yeah, it goes around my body once. So that's how wide it is. Um, and I've just used all kinds of scraps. So I, for when I'm using the fingering, if I'm trying to use up a fingering weight yarn, which is the green one here, for example, I just double it up so it's thick enough. And then um, I've got Aran weight yarn here. I've got the DK weight yarns. But just a mixture of different yarns, and it is just a straightforward granny stripe blanket, and that's how far I've got with it. So, it's not a project that is going to come to an end quickly, um, unless I knit loads more things. So there's no rush on this. This is just a, a you know, a kind of an on-the-go project. It will just be continuous um, until I get it to the length that I want it to be. And then I will decide whether I'm going to keep it or whether I'm going to gift it to somebody because, you know, with the cost of living crisis and the cost of heating going up and stuff, the blankets are coming in really handy right now. So, yeah. So that is it. So that's what I've been working on. Nothing more than that. Like I said, I do, did do a little bit of cross-stitching, but nothing really um, to worth showing you because I haven't really spent a lot of time on it. Um, so yeah that is it thank you for joining me i hope you've enjoyed seeing what i've been working on um if you want to share what you've been working on leave some info in the comment section so i can check out what you've been doing but until next time thank you so much for watching and um, do take care and i will hopefully see you again soon bye for now